granulomatosis with polyangiitis, Wikipedia Audio. Granulomatosis with polyangiitis, formerly known as Wegener's granulomatosis, is a long-term systemic disorder that involves both granulomatosis and polyangiitis. It is a form of vasculitis that affects small and medium-sized vessels in many organs. Damage to the lungs and kidneys can be fatal. The cause of GPA is unknown. Genetics have been found to play a role in GPA though the risk of inheritance appears to be low. Treatment requires long-term immunosuppression with medications such as high-dose corticosteroids, rituximab, or cyclophosphamide to induce remission and azathioprine or methotrexate to maintain remission. Classification The annual incidence of GPA is estimated to be 2.1 to 14.4 new cases per million people in Europe. GPA is rare in Japanese and African American populations but occurs more often in people of Northern European descent. The prevalence of GPA in the United States is estimated to be 3 cases per 100,000 people and equally affects men and women. Granulomatosis with polyangiitis is part of a larger group of vasculitic syndromes called systemic vasculitides or necrotizing vasculopathies, all of which feature an autoimmune attack by an abnormal type of circulating antibody termed ANCAs against small and medium-sized blood vessels. Apart from GPA, this category includes eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis and microscopic polyangiitis. Although GPA affects small and medium-sized vessels, it is formally classified as one of the small vessel vasculitides in the Chapel Hill system. Kidney, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, leading to chronic kidney failure, upper airway, eye and ear disease nose, pain, stuffiness, nosebleeds, runny nose, rhinitis, crusting, saddle nose deformity due to a perforated septum, ears, conductive hearing loss due to auditory tube dysfunction, sensory neural hearing loss, oral cavity, strawberry gingivitis, underlying bone destruction with loosening of teeth. Nonspecific ulcerations throughout oral mucosa, eyes, pseudotumors, scleritis, conjunctivitis, uveitis, episcleritis. Initial signs are extremely variable, and diagnosis can be severely delayed due to the nonspecific nature of the symptoms. In general, rhinitis is the first sign in most people. The cause of GPA is unknown, although microbes, such as bacteria and viruses, as well as genetics have been implicated in its pathogenesis. Inflammation with granuloma formation against a nonspecific inflammatory background is the classical tissue abnormality in all organs affected by GPA. It is now widely presumed that the antineutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies are responsible for the inflammation in GPA. The typical ANCAs in GPA are those that react with proteinase 3, an enzyme prevalent in neutrophil granulocytes. In vitro studies have found that ANCAs can activate neutrophils, increase their adherence to endothelium, and induce their degranulation that can damage endothelial cells. In theory, this phenomenon could cause extensive damage to the vessel wall, in particular of arterioles. Nasal or oral inflammation, painful or painless oral ulcers or, purulent or bloody nasal discharge. Granulomatosis with polyangiitis is usually suspected only when a person has had unexplained symptoms for a long period of time. Determination of antineutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies can aid in the diagnosis, but positivity is not conclusive and negative ANCAs are not sufficient to reject the diagnosis. 
Cytoplasmic staining ANCAs that react with the enzyme proteinase 3 in neutrophils are associated with GPA. If the person has kidney failure or cutaneous vasculitis, a biopsy is obtained from the kidneys. On rare occasions, thoracoscopic lung biopsy is required. On histopathological examination, a biopsy will show leukocytoclastic vasculitis with necrotic changes and granulomatous inflammation on microscopy. These granulomas are the main reason for the name granulomatosis with polyangiitis, although it is not an essential feature. Nevertheless, necrotizing granulomas are a hallmark of this disease. However, many biopsies can be nonspecific and 50% provide too little information for the diagnosis of GPA. A granulomatous inflammation involving the respiratory tract, and, a vasculitis of small to medium size vessels. Signs and Symptoms In 1990, the American College of Rheumatology accepted classification criteria for GPA. These criteria were not intended for diagnosis, but for inclusion in randomized controlled trials. Two or more positive criteria have a sensitivity of 88.2% and a specificity of 92.0% of describing GPA. According to the Chapel Hill Consensus Conference on the Nomenclature of Systemic Vasculitis, establishing the diagnosis of GPA demands. Several investigators have compared the ACR and Chapel Hill criteria. The standard treatment for GPA is to induce remission with immunosuppressants such as rituximab or cyclophosphamide in combination with high-dose corticosteroids. The dose of corticosteroids is generally tapered very slowly over the course of several months to reduce the risk of another GPA flare. Rituximab may be substituted for cyclophosphamide in inducing remission since it is similarly effective and has a comparable side effect profile. After a person with GPA has successfully undergone induction and gone into remission, the treatment goal then shifts to maintenance of remission and preventing subsequent GPA flares. Less toxic immunosuppressing medications such as rituximab, methotrexate, azathioprine, aflunamide, or mycophenolate mofetil are used. Trimethoprim slash sulfamethoxazole may also help prevent relapse. A systematic review of 84 trials examined the evidence for various treatments in GPA. Many trials include data on pooled groups of people with GPA and microscopic polyangiitis. In this review, cases are divided between localized disease, non-organ threatening, generalized organ threatening disease and severe kidney vasculitis and immediately life threatening disease. Therapy for GPA and MPA has two main components induction of remission with initial immunosuppressive therapy, and maintenance of remission with immunosuppressive therapy for a variable period to prevent relapse. The mainstay of treatment for granulomatosis with polyangiitis is a combination of corticosteroids and cytotoxic agents. Before modern treatments, the two-year mortality was over 90% and average survival five months. Death usually resulted from uremia or respiratory failure. With corticosteroids and cyclophosphamide, five-year survival is over 80%. Long-term complications are common, mainly chronic kidney failure, hearing loss, and deafness. Causes Pathophysiology Today Drug toxicity is managed more carefully and long-term remissions are possible. Some patients are able to lead relatively normal lives and remain in remission for 20-plus years after treatment. In generalized non-organ-threatening disease, 
remission can be induced with methotrexate and steroids, where the steroid dose is reduced after a remission has been achieved and methotrexate used as maintenance. In case of organ threatening disease, pulsed intravenous cyclophosphamide with steroids is recommended. Once remission has been achieved, azathioprine and steroids can be used to maintain remission. In severe kidney vasculitis, the same regimen is used but with the addition of plasma exchange. In pulmonary hemorrhage, high doses of cyclophosphamide with pulsed methylprednisolone may be used, or alternatively psych, corticosteroids, and plasma exchange. Diagnosis Criteria Treatment Prognosis Epidemiology The incidence is 1020 cases per million per year. It is exceedingly rare in Japan and in African Americans. Medications, side effect treatments, plasma exchange, kidney transplant. Scottish otolaryngologist Peter McBride first described the condition in 1897 in a BMJ article entitled Photographs of a Case of Rapid Destruction of the Nose and Face. Heinz Karl Ernst Klinger added information on the anatomical pathology. An early name for the disease was pathergic granulomatosis. The disease is still sometimes confused with lethal midline granuloma and lymphomatoid granulomatosis, both malignant lymphomas. The full clinical picture was first presented by Friedrich Wegener, a German pathologist, in two reports in 1936 and 1939, leading to the name Wegener's granulomatosis or Wegener granulomatosis. In 2006, Alexander Wyuat and Eric Madison investigated Wegener's past, and discovered that he was, at least at some point of his career, a follower of the Nazi regime. He was a member of the Sturmabteilung and worked in an office where medical experiments were conducted on Jewish people. In addition, their data indicate that Wegener was wanted by Polish authorities and that his files were forwarded to the United Nations War Crimes Commission. Furthermore, Wegener worked in close proximity to the genocide machinery in Lodz. Their data raised serious concerns about Wegener's professional conduct. They suggest that the eponym should be abandoned and propose Anca associated granulomatous vasculitis. The authors have since campaigned for other medical eponyms to be abandoned, too. In 2011, the American College of Rheumatology, the American Society of Nephrology and the European League Against Rheumatism resolved to change the name to granulomatosis with polyangiitis. Currently, the old name is still widely used despite the consensus to adopt the change. History